Good afternoon, everyone. This is the forecast when the supply chain may or may not stabilize depending on shipping rates at $100,000 a day. Argentina limits beef exports as prices surge 70% in a producer nation. Right at the same time, Chicago Mercantile Exchange launching nature-based global offset futures. Illusionary value printed out of nothing, less than thin air. Different ways to store your food when crops are plentiful, supplies are abundant, store it up, pack it right. But what are the best ways to do that? Investors could still see some of the strongest price action in gold this year, according to Wells Fargo, which sees signs of a developing rally. Money managers believe we could see inflation reach new levels that we have not seen since the Jimmy Carter era. For centuries, investors around the globe have turned to gold in times of economic uncertainty. Gold supplies have flipped from excessive to deficient. And such times in the past have sparked some of gold's strongest price rallies, unquote. Patriot Gold Group has the No Fee for Life IRA, where your IRA or 401k can be in physical gold and silver. And you may be eligible for the No Fee for Life IRA. So go ahead and give the folks at Patriot Gold Group a call to discuss physical gold and silver. And the knowledge that Patriot Gold Group is Consumer Affairs Top rated gold IRA dealer five years in a row from 2016 till present. Click the link in the description box below for more information. And now on with the video. And a dive into another Loch Ness monster chart over on the right. Supply chain demand imbalances causing large declines in retail inventories. The Loch Ness monster poking its head out there are the percent of businesses reporting current incredibly low too low inventories to continue in business this takes us all the way back to 1995 and you've seen it from everything in the last year and a half from toilet paper to lumber to construction materials now used vehicles this used value index another Loch Ness monster straight up poking its head through the Dark lagoon there of ever-rising inflation and prices. You pay more in availability. Rinse and repeat. Extract more wealth from the citizenry of the world. Because you know when shipping rates are coming in at $100,000 a day for the vessel to transit your goods across an ocean, that's going to be passed on to you. So... Look for increasing prices in addition to the money printing and the inflation and all that tie in together. But now we have a perfect example here where a ship that would cost $8 million, the company thought it such a good value to just purchase the ship because a single charter to deliver is the cost of that $8 million ship. That's where our prices are going to deliver. Which brings us to the next point here. Goldman Sachs believes that the arrow moving to the right in time to December 2022, supply chains are going to stabilize and then increase inventory. And reading deeper into the article, it's going to be demand destruction and a pullback of liquidity from the average person on the street with these stimulus checks. That's going to dry up. People are going to quit buying on a whim because they had free money allotted to them. And in addition, the skyrocketing prices are going to limit what people choose to buy, thereby causing a sort of rebalancing of supply chains as things become too expensive for consumers. Only the ultra wealthy will be able to purchase anything. They see this coming in right around a year from now. So read between the lines, the economic crash and hyperinflationary events are going to be starting right about... That same time, January to July 2022, magnetic field lines, less crops being produced on the planet, higher priced foods. So there'll be more goods available because you're going to spend more money for your food. There'll be less pressure on everybody buying. Not a good scenario. And then reading about Argentina, the government's now limiting beef exports. 
This is a producer nation. Now, you know, through the news in the last two months, Argentina also limited corn exports, actually forbade all corn exports for the rest of the year to try to stabilize prices. So what they're going to do is going to put a cap on monthly beef exports, half of last year's average levels for the next two months to see if they can stabilize anything. Not going to happen. They're running about a month and a half behind on these economic figures here, but they were looking at 70% rises in beef prices and this is a producer nation so if you take the supply chain back to the corn and then the farmers in the field you can make a loop on that fine did the government stop corn exports knowing that it would affect the beef production not sure but when a producer nation nearly doubling in prices and then limiting exports what about the countries that don't produce anything that rely almost entirely on imports for food or a great percentage This is where we go into almost all earned money will funnel into the food supply chain, and that's it. Hence, the Goldman Sachs chart. Food's going to get so bone-jarringly expensive, your jaw's going to drop. People are going to stop buying. When was that? Middle of 2022. This is just a perfect example here in front of you. But lo and behold, made out of thin air actually just made out of air, the atmosphere, what we breathe. Carbon dioxide is in there, water vapor, oxygen, nitrogen. And the Chicago Mercantile Exchange is going to launch a nature-based global emission. Remember the invisible statue that sold for $15,000? This is it right here, too. This is an invisible nature-based offset because it's such an existential threat to put even a single gram of CO2 in the air. But you're allowed to pollute as much as you want as a multinational or a military gouge the earth, manufacture, pollute all the way across the oceans, get that thing on a truck, move it in, burn a bunch of electricity so you can keep the box store cool enough with the air con so people can go in and shop in the summer, but you can have a nature-based offset. It's an existential threat that doesn't really affect anybody because the gases are still pumping. And you think planting a few trees is going to work? Invisible statue from the Chicago Mercantile Exchange. The CO2 sequestration, great. I agree, replanting forests is such a good idea. Trees are an amazing way to bring carbon back into a locked form. And that goes with any plant vegetative material. But how long will it take to grow those trees before the offset credit is actually locked back into the tree? Because those factories are pumping it way faster than the trees are growing. And if it's such an existential threat, how are they still allowed to put hundreds of billions of tons into the atmosphere and just say, oh, we're just going to buy it. We're just going to pay somebody to plant trees. It's all good. No, I thought it was an existential threat. The thing's going to end life on the planet. We've got to take it seriously. So creating a value proposition out of thin air literally is what we're watching here. But they do say that it'll need to grow 15x by 2030, which is nine years from now. So with all these things happening across the planet, Food, food, think about food, how to store it, how to prepare it, how to save seed. So here's four different ways. This came off Mike Adams' site, Natural News. Four different possibilities for you to store food that's at your fingertips that you can get rather easily, except mason jars. Luckily, it's that time of the year where they're around a lot. At the end of the summer, you're not going to see another one of these for months, if not half a year. Quart jars, pint jars, half pint, quarter pint. So little jelly jars are on the right. I use it for seed, actually. Quarter pint, anything seeds that then I can put into the freezer. Half pint or the pint I might use for some sort of beans or legumes that I would use for seed stock. Quart and half gallon I always use for longer term, you know, milk powder, that sort of thing, or even the one gallon. Those are incredibly difficult to find. I've been searching high and low to find anything larger than 32 ounce, like 64 ounce, Good luck finding those. But if you could start, get quart pint jars. These are amazing. You can store an enormous amount. Just put it in your closet. Keep it in a cool place. And next would be these airlock containers. You know, you snap the lids on. You're able to keep that for dry goods or put it in the freezer. You can make soups and then freeze the soups. Any kind of fruit juices, they're quite easy to make the juice and then freeze that versus trying to freeze the fruit unthought. 
So there's an enormous amount of food storage techniques if you turn something into a liquid first and then freeze it. But this would be a good idea here. Glass might break on you. This type of plastic, perfect. Now, if we're going to scale it up in size here, five-gallon buckets, but please remember the lids. And if you can get the DOT-approved rubber seal, that's going to be airtight. And also, if you drop it off a truck at 55 miles an hour, it's not going to smash open because it's DOT-approved to fall off a truck at 55 miles an hour. Long-term storage with any of the grains, ancient grains or wheat, spelts, whatever you're looking at, that's an enormous amount of food, just even these 50 gallons that you're looking at here in the picture, even though some of the five-gallon buckets are cut off. That would last a family or a group of people a very long time, especially if you're cooking from scratch. Now, Also, since we are into the summertime and it's abundant, the fruit and veg at the moment, what do you see in front of you here? I would probably remove the leaf at the base of the stem off those, I think they're tomatoes, but storing frozen again after you process it. Frozen foods are the way to go. The only problem is if we lose electricity and there's an electric out event for a prolonged period of time, unless you have a generator, you're going to lose all your food and that would be a terrible thing. That's why it's good to have dried goods stored so you're not 100% relying on all frozen foods. You know, dehydrating is another thing. You could take these same peppers, not so much the cucumbers, dehydrate that. And onions as well, there's dehydrated onions. So you could do an enormous amount with a dehydrator and then putting that into different types of jars or bags. So these are four real simple, easy to find at your fingertips. Now these different types of freezer bags, Ziploc bags, you can order that online or you can go to a store and get it. But those are just... Some ideas that I was thinking of as I'm looking at all these food shortages rolling across the landscape of daily news feeds. I've been preparing myself, but I'm still a little unnerved at what I see happening every single day. So if you're not able to store your own foods and you don't have access to all the dry goods in the mason jars, etc., my Patriot Supply and myself right here at ADAPT 2030, the two-week or the four-week emergency food supply, my Patriot Supply also has one month, six month, and one year food supplies, it's the exact same principle. Add water and you have food. Storable foods up to 20 years in the Mylar bags. Because as we're moving now, whatever you buy today is gonna be far cheaper than it will be next year. And I do wish you the best of luck in your preparations and let me know how your storage techniques are working for you or some tips and tricks that others might wanna read in the comments section below to keep foods fresh while storing them for a longer period of time. I do appreciate you watching. Hope you got something out of the video, and I'll see you next time.